All right, when adding and subtracting rational functions, the rational expressions, the idea is the same as it was in elementary school. We need common denominators. And once you have common denominators, then you just add the numerators. And this process holds for all these problems. The issue is going to be here at the common denominators. This is where things get tricky. For this particular problem, they are in common already. And then the deal with this negative sign is I would make it a plus and just drag that negative up. That way, this turns into one common denominator, 5x plus 1. And then we have 9x to the third minus 8x to the third. And then we just simplify from there. So the idea is the same from elementary school. Once you have common denominators, it's just adding like uh, parts of fractions. And then we just simplify algebraically now at this next higher level. So we have nine exothirds, subtract eight exothirds. And so the result will be one x to the third over five x plus one. Then you would simplify if possible this fully reduced form. Uh, there is no simplification that can happen. Please do not cross out the numerator x with this x down here. They have to be the same uh, as, written as a product. Uh, there's a sum down here so that denies any further canceling or reducing. All right, in the second example, we once again have common denominators provided for us, but then it gets a little more complicated up top because we have a negative sign in the middle and here there's a binomial. So it's not just as simple as dragging the negative sign up, although that is what we're doing. We wanna make sure that this has a parenthesis written around that numerator. So when I take this and make it a plus and then a minus, so bring that negative sign up. I'm actually going to distribute this negative sign into that binomial. So that's going to cause this whole thing to rewrite 5x plus 3. And then what I'm going to do is because we have common denominators, you can actually just make this one big fraction with a distribute the negative sign here. Negative 6 times or times negative is going to be a positive 6x. And then negative times positive 9 is going to be negative nine the biggest issue i have for students is they do not they fail to distribute that negative sign correctly and they leave this as a positive nine now everything is still over six we had equal equivalent denominators so we're adding combining like parts and the numerators just go together and we just reduce simplify uh combine like terms here we have five x and six x and that should give us 11 x's and then we have a positive three negative nine so that should give me a negative six in the numerator and then everything is still over six that is as far as we're going to take this question you could separate this and divide the six here and the 11 separately so you can make that 11 x over six minus six over six if you wanted to to reduce those sixes but you cannot cross the sixes out without dealing with the 11. i would leave it right here and that would be my fully reduced form now we're going to up the rigor with uncommon denominators. So what you need to do is make our denominators in common by finding a least common denominator. And so by that, we're going to be looking at the nine and the five to figure out what's their least common multiple. And that least common multiple will be my least common denominator. Well, that's just going to have to multiply the top and the bottom of the right hand fraction by five and the left hand fraction by nine, because I need to make the five and the nine go up to 45. So this rewrites the problem to now have a, both of these denominators are 45. So what I'm going to do is take this minus sign and make it a plus a negative like this. And now that 7 and 5 is going to become a 35, but that negative sign is going to come along for the right. Now, here's the deal. Everything is a denominator part of 45. So I don't have to write two separate fractions anymore. As soon as my fractions are in common, the numerators can just go ahead and go together as is. So I'm going to bring this 9 times 2 over and turn it into 18. So that's 18x. And then I'm going to have negative 7 times 5 is a minus 35x. It's all one fraction because the denominators were the common. And so I can leave it as one fraction and I just need to simplify what's going on up top. And so 18 minus 35 should give me negative 17 X's 
over 45. And then you would look to reduce vertically, but 17 is prime and it doesn't have any common factors with 45. So this problem is now reduced. All right, now we're going to have variables in the denominator. So we've got to consider that as part of the process of making common denominators. But here, the x's are both in common already, so at least that part's not a struggle. The 9, though, is not the same as the 3, so my job is to find the least common multiple with those to make my least common denominator. Well, that's going to require me multiplying the top and bottom of the right-hand fraction by 3, and that's going to allow my denominator to be 9x in common. So as soon as they're in common, I don't have to write separate fractions. I can just write one denominator where the numerators are being combined. So I just bring this on over. This is now 7 plus the 1 times 3 is 3. And then I just reduce that or simplify, add 7 plus 3 is 10 over 9x. That is my fully reduced form because I can't vertically have any common factors this time. Now things get slightly more exciting where I can't just multiply the one fraction. I have to make common denominators by multiplying to get the least common product here between 9 and 2 to get 18. And so I'm going to have to multiply the top and the bottom of the right-hand fraction by 9 and the top and the bottom of the left-hand fraction by 2. So I'm trying to get 18x. As soon as I do multiply that way, I have 18x in both fractions. So now it's just a matter of writing one fraction with that common denominator of 18x and then taking my numerators and bringing them over to combine. So sliding this on over to the right, I got two times seven should give me the 14. And then I got one times nine, so plus nine. And then I just simplify by bringing my nine and my 14 together to get me 23 over 18x. And then I would look for common uh, factors to reduce, but there aren't any, so that problem is now fully reduced. And now one step higher, we have a minus sign. And so as I multiply, I'm going to have to multiply the 6 on the top and bottom of the right-hand fraction and the 7 on the top and bottom of the left-hand fraction to get my common denominator of 6 and the least common denominator of 6 and 7, which is going to be 42x on both sides. Now, as soon as they are in common, I can just rewrite this as one fraction over 42x. And then my minus sign needs to go up and to the right with my four times my six there. And so bringing this to the right, seven times seven, give me 49. And then my minus 24 from my four times six. And then I just go ahead and subtract the numerator and 49 minus 24 is going to give me 25. And because 25 doesn't have any common factors with 42, we are fully reduced.